What's up guys? Today's video is going to be sponsored by Squarespace. A lot of you ask us how to start your own business like we did. Utilizing Squarespace, you can build your own website, manage your emails, and even check out all the analytics. Stay tuned to the end of this video and I'm going to give you all the details. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Throttle. We've got a new episode for you today and we are going to be working on the... What are we working on today Ricky? I'm Rick Civic out there that's been in the way for a couple of days hey, now without being touched. This makes me happy. So we're getting back on the uh, EK Civic that we have been working on but had to take a hiatus from because we had to get the MR2 ready for MR2 assemble. We need to get going on this thing again. That means Ricky and I are gonna spend some hours tonight with uh, the front end of this car. We've got some fab work to finish up and some uh, templating and things to make. So we're gonna bring you guys along for the journey tonight. One thing I do wanna mention is I wanna give a huge shout out to Industrial Metal Supply. I did drop by there today. Fantastic folks over there helped me pick out the proper materials that I need to do a bunch of the fab work on this with Ricky. Ricky, let's get to work, brother. Let's do it, baby. Ooh. So we're gonna be in the front. Ooh. Good. Okay. Good. grinding and cutting stuff away I'm gonna be making some templates so F can weld to the oil pan so you guys can see here Mickey has already cut the oil pan where he needed to make space for the cross member and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna grab some cardboard and some marker and scissors and I'm gonna make templates and then I'm gonna cut it out of actual metal so then F can weld it into the pan and we can have one solid pan one custom-made oil pan for the car I will be right back guys know Ricky and I spent our evening last night getting things ready so that uh, Evan can weld up all these parts for us today and we can get basically everything final mocked up in the car and we can start building our actual engine mounts and transmission tunnel. Evan is currently welding uh, on our little subframe cross member deal that we made. We had to put some clearance on the top of it here and we're adding some gussets to the side. I can't look at that but you guys can. Um, we're basically just triangulating that area where it meets the sub the subframe arm meets the bottom of our chassis rail so that it's very strong and durable the thing is probably way overbuilt it's not the prettiest thing in the world but it's going to work and uh, i'm excited about that Ha! <laughs> 
So we've also got the oil pan boxed out uh, and ready to go. So that's gonna fit over top of our K-member or subframe that goes in. And we are not gonna finish weld that just yet. We're gonna go ahead and put the cross member back in, bolt the oil pan up, make sure we have the clearances we need uh, and then some, and then we can at that point go back and finish weld the oil pan. All right, it's time to go put this thing back on the car so we can test fit the oil pan. One eternity later. Okay guys, we'll fast forward about an hour. I've been doing a bunch of trial and error with the EK and the uh, K20 motor, along with all of our fabricated parts that we've been making throughout the day. And I've had Ricky here with me helping as well. We've kind of got our final resting location now, which is pretty cool. I like that the top of the rocker cover here um is basically at the seam sealer joint uh at the firewall which is pretty cool it makes it look pretty oem we've got enough clearance back here that the engine can move on the mounts and not make contact with the firewall or anything like that i think we're in pretty good shape and so you guys understand what we ended up doing was we ended up notching out our uh cross member that we made as you saw in the previous video and basically created the room that we need for the oil pan to sit over top of it and allow the engine to move um, freely without making contact with that. Oh, Ricky. Hello. What you got there, brother? Oh, like my gloves. Some nice gloves. My gorilla grip. Oh, I should throw this in there. If you guys are gonna be at SEMA, we are actually gonna be partnering with Gorilla Grip. They've been a long time partner of ours. They supply us with all the gloves that we wear around the shop here. I thought that was top secret. Oh, oops. Anyway, I'm telling you guys, if you're watching this video, you hear it here first. We are gonna be at the, the Gorilla Grips booth at SEMA, and we got a few thousand pairs of uh, throttle Gorilla Grip co-branded co gloves that we'll be giving away. But if you're gonna be at SEMA, make sure you stop by and give us a shout out at the Gorilla Grip gloves booth. And uh, gloves. we'll be handing them gloves out, boys. So come get some. And uh, I'm sure we'll also have some contests as well for those of you that can't attend SEMA. However, you guys are probably wondering how the heck did we achieve this mounting location? It basically looks like the engine's floating because there's no motor mounts yet, right? No motor mounts. Right. right. We actually have hockey pucks. <laughs> we use hockey pucks around here a lot because they're a good material. We use they're, it for everything. <laughs> it's a nice hard uh, vulcanized rubber material and they don't squish under a uh, load. So, or enough that they don't damage things. So we've got them wedged between our oil pan modification and our K-member. And essentially we're using those to float the engine on the K-member to where we want it to sit. Turns out that the height of a hockey puck is exactly the height that we need. All right guys, so you're probably wondering what I'm making here. We've got two one by one tubes with a little bend on them. And that's because we're making some braces for our cross member. I had John from JSP Fab down here yesterday and he recommended that we put some sort of brace, whether it be off of here up to the frame rail or off of here back to the chassis. We both decided that back to the chassis is the way to go uh, because it's not gonna be visible when you're looking down through the hood. It'll be a lot cleaner look. And what we've done is we've went ahead and made these one by ones to tie into the two by two section that's going up to the frame rail. And what that's gonna do is uh, go back here to where the old compliance bushings used to be at for the old um, suspension setup. And what's gonna happen is this is gonna tie in right here. And then uh, I put a little like five degree bend on this tube which will get welded up. And then this will get bolted to the chassis uh, and then onto the, uh, I think I have them backwards. I think this is the one for this side. But at any rate, you guys get the idea. Um, essentially, we're going to be tying the K-member back into the chassis back here at a structural point of the car. And uh, Evan's going to go ahead and weld these up. I am going to go ahead and box these in on the end with the tube. I know the proper way to run a bolt through a hollow tube is to actually encase a tube inside of it. In this case, we are not able to do that because of the size of the bolt. Um, so we're going to go ahead and box in the outer, outer portion. Uh, and then we have a large washer head on the end of the bolt. Should be good, these don't have to be super duper tight. They're not gonna crush this once we uh, box the end in. So we should be good to go, I'll weld it up. And then at that point, the K-member pretty much should be done. And we think we have a solution already for our uh, tension rod setup that's gonna go to the front. 
and it's way simpler than we thought it was gonna be. So I'm super excited about that. Let's get over to the table and weld up these tubes. I just hammered this into place, got a bolt in it. Now you guys can see exactly what we were trying to do here. So basically this is gonna tie in our K-member, our subframe to our chassis. And now we can tack this in, weld it up, and we'll be plenty solid here. Well, that's gonna be about it for today, guys. We got a lot of fab work done. Ricky and I are gonna head out of here now. We've got a fundraiser to get to first thing in the morning. We're gonna take the RX-7s out there. And then we've got Stance Wars LA later in the evening. So we've got a full day of car activities tomorrow. I'm gonna get the Bad Apple out. Ricky's gonna get his RX-7 out. And I think Helen's uh, Skittles RX-7 will be out there as well as a few others. So if you guys are into rotary cars, stay tuned for the footage to follow. And there's also gonna be a heap of other cars out there too. So check it out. It's a new day. I am in San Pasqual High School against Condido for a charity event. Right now our buddy uh, Chris, um, he's just put his car on the dyno. They have a, di a portable dyno jet here at his event. Um, he's about to do a dyno run, dyno pull. Uh, so yeah, let's get on it. are done here in Escondido and we are rolling out to Sense Wars LA. The Bad Apple made it. My car's here. Black Ship Rotary RX-7 is going and uh, last added to the crew, Mr. Chris. It's going to be going with us to Sense Wars. So we're going to have four rotaries out there. Go! 
we hope you guys enjoyed today's EK content. We have a ton of footage to go through. I've seen a lot of comments of people wondering what the status is of the 350Z, of the Porsche, of the EK, of the MR2. Please bear with us guys. I know that you probably might have noticed that the quantity of videos has gone down. We are still filming and we are still recording. Um, we just have a lot of footage to get through and we also have SEMA coming up. So um, what I do want to ask you guys is, uh, because we do read the comment section, is what project do you guys want to see next? We really tried to focus on the MR2 and uh, we have a really awesome video coming out next for that. But uh, I want to ask you guys, like, what do you want to see on the Throttle YouTube channel? What do you want to see more of? What do you not care to see as much of? Um, so just to do a quick overview if you're new to the channel, um, we have the following projects in work at the Throttle Shop. Toyota MR2 V6 Swap. We have the K20 uh, Rear Wheel Drive Civic. We have the Nissan 350Z Tesla Powered Swap. Uh, we have the Porsche 911 Turbo Wide Body. We have uh, Mickey and Ricky's FDRX7s. Um, and we also have my BMWs, the E46 M3, E36 M3, and F80 M3. Um, I guess the last one would be Rick's uh, CLS AMG 55. That's the dad mobile, but the beast dad mobile. If you guys wanna see that, let us know. So please, comment down below right now. Uh, I look forward to reading all of your comments, and yes, we do read them. So uh, just thank you guys so much. We're almost at 600,000 subscribers. We appreciate you guys for sticking around to the end, and we'll see you in the next video. As I mentioned earlier, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, and I wanted to give you guys a couple tips. We get asked all the time, how do we start our own business, or how do I start my own business? I would like to say that utilizing Squarespace is a good way to get started. So what Squarespace is, it's actually an online uh, website that allows you to build your own website with cool templates and those sorts of things. It sort of makes it quite a lot easier than trying to develop your own uh, website from scratch. Now they have all these cool uh, tools that you can use to get set up very quickly. They also have an online store that you can utilize, and they also have an email client that allows you to manage all your emails within Squarespace. So if you guys have an idea to start a business, don't be scared, get on the web, get your site up, and get your store open, manage your emails all in one place. So simply click the link below to save 10% off your first website or domain.